welcome back again to the Bucks UK TV for episode number 32. And this week I'm joined by our regulars, Kieran and Graham. And as you hopefully can see, we've got a very special guest for you all this week. We've got the, the legend that is Simeon Rice. Oh, you far too kind. You far too kind. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's good to be here. I feel like I'm right here overseas in London doing my thing. What's up? That is, it's cool. great to have you here. Um, and just to, to make it a little bit easier, rather than me going through uh, a sort of complicated intro, what we've done is we've set up a little video clip just to, to show off some of the highlights of your career, Simeon. Oh, let's do it. Let's see it. should give you a, a great introduction to the legend as I say that it is Simeon Rice um, but we've, we've got a few questions for you so I'll, I'll start and really we're looking for just knowing a little bit more about you obviously going right back to start with like how and sort of when did you really sort of realize that you had the talent for playing the defensive end position when did you really sort of realize that you could be as good as you are and that you could make it in the NFL, I guess? Well, I, I've, I've never been short of too much, uh, what we would say, confidence. I've, I've always been a very confident player. Uh, uh, I, st I started out first playing running back. So I first started out wanting to be my, like the legend of Walter Payton. I grew up in Chicago, watching Chicago football, watching the 85 Bears win. And, and that kind of ignited me, watching football early as a kid. So I knew I wanted to be a part of the sport, and I loved the sport. I loved the concept. I loved it. I slept, breathed it, ate it. Everything I, I did was to, to help me become the player that I was going to become. You know, I started off in many different sports, running track. I wrestled. I did all these things. And up until I started playing, like, Pop Warner. We had Pop Warner football. Here that you start playing in your youth, like the seventh and sixth, seventh grade, eighth grade, I started playing. Then I got recruited out of there, and I went to Mount Carmel High School. And and our high school was it was a different high school because my school I played with a guy named Donovan McNabb. I don't know if you guys know him, but he played for the Eagles. And he was a big time quarterback. He was my young guy. We played with some guys that ultimately made it to the NFL. That being said. Uh, my early desire to play the position of, of, of defensive end started in college playing rush linebacker. I, I came to college as kind of like an athlete. I was playing every position that first two weeks. Coaches was arguing about what position I want, was going to play. Then they just asked me, like, what do you want to play? And I said, I kind of like this rush linebacker thing. And I, I, then they get, you got the quarterback was similar to, like, what Lawrence Taylor did with the Giants. You know? yeah. I kind of want to do that. You know? And I had a little success on that in high school. So they recruited me my, my last year in high school as a, as a defensive lineman. So I kind of migrated myself out there, outside linebacker, had a lot of success, rookie of the year, All-American in college. Then I was on my way. It, at that point, it was well-defined. I loved going after quarterbacks. I loved kind of creating mayhem in the game. I loved blowing up things so I was like at that point of my career I knew I could kind of like take my talents to the college level the collegiate level and do it as well and I wanted to try it you know beyond knowing it was the ambition of trying trying was was enough trying was like seeing what I was made of it's the journey and I loved it I lived for the journey so Putting myself on that path, that was when I was able to ignite my abilities up against the, the best, the best college athletes in the world. And I was being a bunch of year. I was came the one pick overall. I stayed in school, got drafted by the Cardinals, and rookie of the year and all that other stuff was born. So yeah, I, 
I've always had a belief in myself. I just wanted to pair my belief and my confidence up against those with equal as belief in their abilities as well to see where I stood. And I stood tall, so <laughs> things went well. I was third, uh, number one all the time in the Big Ten, things like that. So things went well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. You stood tall. And we know, as you said, you got drafted uh, by the Cardinals um, right. and you, you came to the Bucks as a, as a free agent. And obviously, right. we, we've been kind of comparing and contrasting and saying, you know, th- like a lot of players have come in this free agency. There's a bit of a, the sort of Tom Brady effect sort of in the last free agency. Was there a particular motivation or, or something or a person or a player or a coach that sort of brought you to the Bucks? Or? Well, it was, you know, it was none of that. It was me coming out from Arizona. I was... Um, been playing in Arizona, we had the number one defense. Uh, we, I was able to help anchor this defense to to get our team to a uh, playoff win. We won a playoff against the, the Cowboys. It was the first time in 50 years we won a playoff game. and We changed some things around, but I didn't feel like the team was going in the right direction. And I'll never forget, I was on a ski trip, and I was watching the Buccaneers play the uh, Redskins, and they were the playoff. So I basically said to myself, uh, if I was on that team, they would win. I was like, we, I think I could get that team to a Super Bowl. And me and my best friend at the time, we was watching the game, and free agency happened. And I went to Chicago, uh, visited New York, and Tampa was deep in my heart because I was thinking, I remember uh, meeting Coach, uh, Coach Marinelli at the Pro Bowl, and he really liked it. And everybody was saying that the Pro Bowl likes me out. He's going to come after you in free agency. And I already had a thought. I already was thinking they were one player away. So during our free agency, we met downtown Chicago. Well, I was talking to uh, Rich McKay on the phone downtown Chicago. And the, the, the free agency was going kind of awry and everything was going apart. And I just simply uh, told him because we didn't know if a deal could get done. And I said, listen, if you all bring me to Tampa, I'll have you all in the, in the Super Bowl within a year or two. And then Rich McKay was like, okay. I said, seriously, you get this deal done, I get us to the Super Bowl. And, you know, things happened well, and we got there. And I'll never forget, as the confetti was falling, Rich McKay comes up to me and hugs me. and was like, wow, you kept your word. I'm like, no doubt. <laughs> so it was everything on your plan. That's, that is it great. Tough, That's... It was tough. It was tough. It was a... It was a very, very tough year, let me tell you. You know, I had to get adjusted playing with staff. Staff had to get adjusted with playing with me. They did some things the way they normally did it. And uh, as talent prevails and as, as great players play, they had to start making amends to kind of like bend the defense around the way I played the game and things like that. We all got on the same page and uh, we kind of took off. So it was a beautiful thing. I think we, we all agree we with agree. that. We agree, definitely Absolutely. agree, yeah. And so, obviously, like, you, you played, as you say, in, in what was a terrific defence, and you're playing against, obviously, a lot of great teams. Were there any particular teams that you that you really enjoyed playing against? Or, you know, was it great fun going back up against the Cardinals again when you saw them? Or They were so behind. They were so far in my rear view when I played the Cardinals, I didn't really care. I, at first, I, honestly, at first, to answer your question, I was really I, – I couldn't wait to play the Cardinals. But they weren't on our schedule for the first two, three years. So as – and I was having so much success. And as we all know, if you're happy in your position, you don't kind of look back. You, people – only only people that can play in life are those people that don't feel justified in their position or they don't feel satisfied in their position. I felt so encouraged. I felt so free. I felt so happy as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I wish I would have drafted there so much so that I didn't have the feelings that I had about the Cardinals kind of melted away because I was felt like I was in a place I wanted to be. Although I still wanted to beat them really bad, I didn't have the same malice in my heart as when I first left. I, uh, there were new rifles. There's always new rifles. There were new demons that we had to exercise and the demons and the, and those things that I had to exercise with, with within our conference. It was the, the it was Atlanta Falcons. It was the, the Carolina. It was those teams that I was going to play twice a year. 
and and ultimately have to create this rivalry and create this malice, this new malice, this newfound um, challenge to help propel us to where we were. So I think I wanted, um, I think all systems led to that Eagles game, really, because that was the biggest thing. They had to beat the Eagles in subtropical uh, temperatures within 40 degrees below. So we had to go again. Florida guys come to, to, from 80 degrees. Not sure what that is, Celsius. What's that, like 20 degrees or something like that? <laughs> something like that, right? Yeah, somewhere around that. I'm, I'm not good with the Fahrenheit to, right, to right, right. Celsius is hot, right? right? Celsius is, 20, is hot, right? 20 degrees. I mean, 20 Celsius. So we coming down, and now we're going to, like, subtropical weather, and, you know, we had to get it done. And I think that Eagles game, because the players were talking a little bit, the players was creating a, a lot. There was a rival that was understood. And we had to get through each other to, to get to the championship game, to get to a, a world championship game, to get to the Super Bowl. So that's where all my systems was. I was so focused in the moment and and becoming what I was becoming that old rivals died. As fans, we used to, as fans, we used to get so bored of all the um, the game coverage, starting with that opening shot of the thermometer. And, the, and the, you know, the Bucks have never won when it's below, like, Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Don't jinx us from the yeah. beginning. Right? <laughs> they, 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 teams, uh, you know what that is? That's really for, like, Vegas. That's really for those betting guys, those betting people that's betting against the game. So they look at it every microscopic, microscopic part of the game to get edges. Everybody's trying to get an edge. And it was true, but I'm from Chicago, so the cold doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> so we brought a whole new level of like confidence in any terrain. It was like put me in any situation in front of anybody. We get it done. It didn't matter. Yeah, nice. Um, you you spoke. You touched earlier on about um, having to get used to SAP and SAP having to get used to you. What what was it like in that that locker room? Were there were there any tensions or was everyone in pretty good terms? Yeah, there was tension at the beginning, you know, because. Here I come. I come from the clear blue sky. I come from a situation where, you know, uh, everything was made my way. I was a first round pick. You know, uh, I'm in a situation that was built for me pretty much defensively, and we were building on that. Now I'm coming into a situation that was that was more customized for uh, a three technique. You know, the Tampa two was built upon a three technique, having uh, the defensive tackle kind of like slander the offense and blow things up and make things, make big plays, get the big sacks. It all started with him, you know, when I got, when I got to Tampa and, and the guys couldn't really get it on their own. They were, we were running stunts. We stunt, we were stunning up front, running line stunts. And that's just different uh, movements up front within the D line to help get guys loose. And, and that being the caveat, because that was the big sack came before I got to Tampa. So, when I came here, I didn't need a stunt to be ran. So that kind of led you friction. I'm like, I don't run stunts. You get you end up next to me, I, you're going to get free because I'm going to get free. You know, my thing was beat your man. Everybody, you got to win your one-on-one. I mean, the, the, their defense was predicated on winning, winning a one-on-one, but it really came alive when I got there. Because one thing Rod did was, was a tremendous thing. He kept everybody accountable. And Again, I wasn't a guy that needed help to get loose. I just need, you just need to line me up and say go, and I can line up and I can go against the best of them. So and and, and dominate in a dominating fashion. And I knew that it, uh, it took some time because they were used to doing things their way, running stunts, text exits. These are line stunts between the defensive tackle and defensive end. They led the three man stunts and things like that. But I didn't do those things. You know, uh, at first it caused tension, but then when we start having a lot of success, a lot, and I mean a lot of success, it be sat kind of like, okay, this is the direction we're going in. So it started with him, and you know, him being who he was. You know, at first it was a, it was again, it was a battle, you know, because I'm here, I'm, I'm here, I am. They calling stunts, and I'm calling them off. Like, yo, we got, we got an exit going. I'm like, I'm not running that. <laughs> they like, yo. My whole my whole moniker was be good. Like what? Be good. You better be good. You line up next to me because I don't need the help. So now we now we now we slice and dice and offenses up, and we're coming home 
without running stunts, without running blitzes, and we just come in like and it's it's money. It's just happening. Things are happening. We're causing plays, havoc, offenses, it's throwing picks and fumble causes and things like that. Now, now it's my style of defense. And 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 integrated in what Tampa has always done. So it became this like beautiful maestro of like give and take where if we ran the stunt, it was a natural. It wasn't because we calling it that. We just naturally had a feel of each other. So it was yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah. So it was a growing on my part. It was growing on Tampa's part and the blending of a team and culture coming together to make one of the best defenses ever. Yeah. Place on the football field. It was, it was great to watch. Loved watching it. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us, but we've we've watched uh, the last few weeks with Tom Brady and, and the rest of the guys celebrating in the Super Bowl. What what was the experience like for you? Did the did the party last for three weeks or whatever after after the last Super Bowl in two thousand and two two thousand three? The party never stops. <laughs> the party's still going. <laughs> yeah, um, it was it, it was amazing because I did the Regis and Kelly. I don't know if you all get that over there. So I did all that. It, for my for my personal, I did a media run that was epic. It was it was a good time from from doing all the like major networks and things like that. So it's a way to get your brand out there. It was again a way to get our team out there and represent the team and doing that, doing all the talk show hosts from, from the uh, Carson Daly show to the Jimmy Fallon shows to whatever guys were doing at the time. So it was a great time and just it was a great time of recognition for what we were able to achieve and to have. One of the great de- the great defenses that ever be a part of that, and to anchor that one of the greatest defenses that ever played in the NFL was a, it was yeah. a amazing, amazing thing. So now we can talk about it in our reverie right now between me and you guys that's over there right now representing us to the fullest. You know, you're yeah. all Tampa fans. No matter where you are, you're Tampa Bay fans, and we try to represent you all to the fullest. So it's a beautiful thing that yeah. we can come down and we can sit down and talk about our culture and how we got – to where we are, and like I said, the party never stops. Not even to this day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice one. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll put you in the spot talking about um, comparing the two teams from, from these two eras. How do you think that matchup would go if the 2002 team played oh, this year's Super Bowl like team? That? Yeah. You do me like that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stitch right. you right up. Okay, look. We still doing our victory lap, so let me let me let me think about this. You know? I, I would say, how do we match up? Well, nobody can block me, you know, yep. and like at all, and nobody can block that. You know, we got two guys that's just unstoppable, and they got some guys too that's really really good up front. Um, I think our our O line matches up with their D line really well. You know, I think between Kenyatta and the guys that's up front that we had. I think we would match up okay, Roman over. I think we would match up all right. That's just my thoughts. Yep. Uh, at the quarterback spot, they got us. You know, they got they got a they got a gangster. They got a guy that can slice and dice you up. Um, and and uh, Tom Brady. So, but again, he would have to have guys that can stop me. There's nobody on the planet that can stop myself. There's yeah. nobody on the planet that can stop that. We got Derrick Brooks. You know, we got we got Hall of Famers. That's bookend that has been doing it a lot longer, a lot, and, and it's predictable. We are predictable defense that just continue that you know what we can do, but you can't stop it. They have a great defense as well, but they're young and some coming. Um, yeah, I don't want to take anything away from who they are because they're amazing. It's their time, so I'm gonna give it to them right now. This their time to shine, but I think if we play it head to head, of course, I think we win. But that doesn't take away from anything from what those young guys is doing right now. Right now, yeah. they got the sun on them. Right now, they're standing in the light. Right now, they're doing their victory lap. Right now, they're playing great football. So, you know, they have a lot of weapons on the offensive side of the ball as well. Got a lot of weapons. Come on. They have yeah. a slew full of weapons. And, and the key is to not let those guys get going. But, again, out of respect, I want to say, for what they did right now, let's give them their due. I don't really want to pair ourselves up against them no. because I think I'm the greatest of all time. I think my defense <laughs> is the greatest of all time. So yeah. <laughs> right there, that's where it begins and ends. I would say um, it would be interesting if not anything else. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks for answering that one. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but for what it's worth, okay. I said exactly the same before you came on. I said I'd bet you guys against, the old offen- against this offensive line every time. I think you'd be sitting in 
in Tom yeah. Brady's face the whole day. All yeah. day long. That, no, that's a fact. There's nobody that's yeah. blocking. Yeah. There's not one. There hasn't been one built, and not on that line at all. And with Sass as well, and Greg Spires, the guys we had up front, and we had, yeah. now we go to the back level with Brooks, Lynch, and Ryan Day, yeah. Brian Kelly, and Dwight Smith. There's just a whole host of guys that been doing that long. So, yeah. <laughs> but I would give them the props as well, you know. Yeah. Now, okay. Simeon, the beauty of, a, of an NFL championship is that it's forever, and no one can ever take it away from you. Talk to me. That's but what the, I'm uh, about. <laughs> Way to set that up. But, the, but the, yeah, the next, the, next, the next tier for the Bucks is can they do it again? Can they repeat? And you know, you've got the experience of how do you go back to the next year? What, what's there still to play for? Or is there, is there a target on your back? How does it feel? There's definitely a target on your back, but you have to be hungry. There's a certain hunger that you have to have, that you have to possess. As a team, now you can have that as a player, but as a team, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if you have a player as a player if the team isn't involved. I mean, to be able to have that level of success and uh, to be able to emulate that success the following year, you have to have the pieces in place that think on that level, that spectrum, that dream, that believe, that have that level of imagination. And they do. They have it with a quarterback. It starts with uh, Tom Brady. He has that type of imagination where he sees himself in that position again, challenge himself to be better than and he was last year. As you see right now, I think that Odell Beckham is trying to come down to Tampa. I mean, right now, Tampa is kind of, kind of the place to play right now. It's like where all the free agents is trying to go. They're not running to Hollywood. They're not running to L.A. right now. They're not running to these other teams as they did in the past, the Cowboys, they always talk about the Cowboys. I don't know why, because they never win. But all these other high places where it's great marketing, big city. Everybody want to come down to uh, down to South Florida, Central Florida, and play some football. So it's amazing what winning does. So I think Tampa's going to be in line again to be in, in a great position to see what they do. And I just see that defense just getting better. Shaq Barrett and the boys is just getting better, and they just getting started. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see how they come back next year. And it's going to be even tougher because, you know, Mahomes is no joke. <laughs> Kansas City is no joke. Yeah. They're going to want to get back. They want, they're going to want to get it back. And they're going to want to run it back. So it's going to be interesting. And we're going to get interested in how it happens in the, uh, in the, in the NFC uh, South with that conference with uh, – with uh, New Orleans and that situation happening, with Drew Brees retiring, it's going to be interesting to see how all these things shape up. And I'm going to be a fan of just like you guys along the way, just watching and seeing what's going to what's going to crack, what's going to happen out of it. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. We will take a, a quick time out just to uh, do our usual thanks to Bucks Report for supporting the podcast and for helping to promote us. Um, also, go back and take a look at episode number 31 where we had our awards ceremony and you can see who you as our members voted for as the, uh, the top players at each of the positions last year. <clears throat> and um, we, we, uh, we have to do a little bit of self-promotion. We hot off the presses. Bucks UK has been voted the number one Bucks Twitter fan account. Wow. Um, so we were absolutely <laughs> delighted to, uh, to take that accolade. So thank you. Obviously, not only to our members, that wasn't going to be enough. So for everyone, whether you're in the Bay Area, whether you're East Coast, West Coast, thank you. That was, uh, that was really nice to see. And, and we're, you know, we're getting on for over 5,000 followers on Twitter now. So please follow us on Insta as well. Come and join in on Facebook and, of course, on our forum on our website. Thank you very, very much. Uh, now, Simeon, we've got some questions from our members because say we're not we're not a news outlet. We're not trying to be ABC. We're we're a fan club, so uh, we couldn't it. we couldn't get you on without having some questions from our members. Keep it thorough. I love it. I love it. Keep it thorough. I like it. All right. I love what you all are doing over there, man. This oh, so thanks. Cool. Thank you. I Thank wish you, you all were around when I was playing. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah. we were just just not enough of us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hopefully, you can see that. So. Um, so, Simeon, our first question is from Philip. And Philip says, if Simeon could pick his ideal Buccaneers defensive front seven across all the years, who would he start? And we're assuming you're only looking for six because we think you're going to put yourself in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would definitely have to. I mean, I could move the outside backer if we got to rush it. <laughs> but I, I would probably, you know, I'm going to have to obviously go with Shaq. Yeah, I'm going to have to obviously go with my man, Shaq. 
Big Sap is my first pick. I'm going to go with Shaq Barrett. I'm going to go with Greg Spires. I'm going to go with Ellis Williams. That's four, right? Yeah. I, I, I might. I got to go with Bug. I got to go with Bugger McFarlane. I got to go with Mac, even though he's doing this ESPN thing. That's my guy. And I, I'm going to have to go with the all-time great. You know who the all-time great is, right? Leroy Salmon. I got to go oh, with yeah. Leroy. So I got to mm-hmm. play with Leroy, see what that's like. So, yeah, yeah there, that's what that's what we're doing up front. That's fantastic. And actually, Wims feels like he doesn't really get enough credit. I mean, maybe it was the teenage me, but whenever I was playing Madden, obviously, every player started off as Wims at D-Tackle. Bro, you know, that man's got some you, moves. There, man, let me tell you, this is, that's, Ellis is my guy. He was my rookie. I show, I taught him the game. Sap, he learned the game for myself as Sap. And he was just, he had so many moves as a defensive tackle. He was so fluid, so explosive, could change directions make big plays, and his, his trajectory was really to be a pro bowler type of uh, defensive tackle. He had six sacks his rookie year, big-time, big-time player. So, yes, Eric, I mean, excuse me, he would definitely be in my, you know, all-time great defensive line. Fantastic. Our next question is from Steve, who said, what did you think of the London NFL experience when the Bucks came over in 2019? That was amazing. I mean... That experience at Tottenham, Tottenham Stadium, was it? Yeah. Am I saying it right? That's yeah, like Tottenham, I yeah. It. Tottenham. I loved it. I loved the stadium. I, the, the NFL experience was amazing. The fans was amazing. Honestly, I wanted to move there. Just put that flat out. I wanted to flat out and move there. I, I couldn't believe it. Seriously, I'm serious. I talked to the NFL. Uh, I was talking to the NFL, NFL offices, and I was uh, speaking to them about actually doing some things over there, like, seriously, like, doing a, a part of the football season because I really, really enjoyed the experience. I've been to London plenty of times, but not over there like that, doing the whole NFL experience. All the Bucks was playing. The fans, you guys, was amazing. You all, you guys made it amazing. You know, um, I went and I, I think I did. I went to one of the pubs and I did one of the experiences with the fans and they came out different uh, questions and answers got the fans all rallied up it was a one truly amazing amazing experience i wish we would have won it we didn't but that's okay but the experience in itself as it as it stood it was just amazing experience and i loved it you guys made it you guys made it what it was i think i had my mindset was prepared for it because i was open for it but you guys made it a very truly un, a remarkable experience Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. And then our, our last member question is from Kevin, who says, you've already made a name for yourself in the world of film, having directed. You might have to tell us a bit more about that, because I'm sure that's some of your current projects. If you could work with any actor, male or female, living or dead, who would it be and why? I think I would work with... It depends on... Okay, here. Here, let me answer that. Let me think. I think I would work with... Uh, I think I will. I would love to work with Denzel Washington. I do. I will work with Denzel on some type of murder mystery type of film because I think he pulls that off. Where he is ultimately the antagonist, you know, where he's playing like a bad guy, but he's participating as if he was a good guy. And the story would be kind of like him written into this situation where. He, we have to figure out where these mass killings are happening, but it's really him, but nobody knows it. it I think it would be something like that because that I sounds like a plan. Have you got have, have you got the have you got the script done yet? No, I'm just freestyling off the top of my head. <laughs> I, that's how I can. That's how I direct. I see it. Yeah. I can see he can play both both characters. So yeah, I mean, some people might have expected you to go into coaching, or um, sounds like you're going right. to come and be the GM for a new London franchise. Yeah, so, you know, what, how come, uh, how come, if, why movies, why films, directing and producing? You know, I actually did a film. I want you all to check it out. It's, it's a film that sucks. But it's, ah. I still, I, I was in it. It was, uh, <laughs> at least I think I, it sucks. But I, I looked at my performance and I was like, this, I actually acted in this one. Now the film I directed, I loved it. I wrote it. That was, if you have never checked it out, check it out. That's, just, that's unsullied. That's amazing. I think that's a good film. That was the one I wrote, directed, produced. But this film I was in called, it just came out. And it's called, what's the film called? It's called Witness Unprotected. 
my cousin called me and said, Simeon, you was great in this movie. I'm like, what movie? Because I never told anybody I did this film. Mm. And I didn't know it came out. And he's like, he's like, I said, what movie? He goes, and this movie called Witness Unprotected. I'm like, I never played that movie called Witness Unprotected. Keep in mind, when I did the film, I didn't even have a title for it. So I check it out. It's on Amazon. I, and I'm watching Amazon. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, he tells me, he's like, yo, you play a cop. I'm like, I didn't play a cop. And in my head, I'm thinking, I play this. I play. I play a detective. So I'm like, I didn't even know this. So I go to the film. Why well, check it out on Amazon? I look at my part. I'm like, hmm. and keep in mind when you are watching this. If you watch it, I don't even know the lines to it. They feed me the lines off off camera because I was just learning. I just learned the script like that day, and that was like my first acting gig. And that's nothing I ever dreamed of. I really, really love direct. I love it. I, I love directing that's what i love doing so there's gonna be more to come on that but that film that i did was witness unprotected movie that i did that i wrote directed and produced was unsullied check that out if you get a chance yep. it's gonna it's on any other platform well, when you're coming yeah. over for the uh the big premieres at leicester square in london you let us know and we'll come and we'll come and cheer and you can do that you can do a, you can do a tom cruise and come and have selfies with us no, no we'll definitely do that why not i just like to really thank you Simeon for joining us today I mean we're absolutely honoured to have you know as you say um, the the best unblockable defensive end that the Buccaneers have had so you know it's been great having you have you got anything else that you you kind of want to just say to us or to, to the other members anything any final um, thoughts you'd leave, leave us with First of all, I like how you guys all rocked up with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, memorabilia everywhere. That's a, that's really cool. It's amazing to see the reach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the fan support that's everywhere. And you guys make this what it's supposed to be, being the number one podcast for Tampa uh, for t- the Buccaneers. Obviously, it, it goes without saying because you guys' support makes it as such, so I feel the love. I'm sorry that we didn't get a chance to meet before, you know, I think it was last week you and you guys hit me up. We missed each other. Uh, but we're doing it now, and that's amazing. I hope, again, we have many, many more chances to speak about the Buccaneers and what's going on and things like that with the NFL. You guys keep doing what you're doing because I think you guys are amazing, for real. Well, that's absolutely Thank brilliant, you. and we'd love to talk to you again in the future. I mean, okay. so... I guess there's all all that is to say is thank you again to Simeon for joining us. Thank you to my co-host. One more thing, you all gotta get you all gotta get big staff on. You all gotta get <laughs> you gotta get one on. We're scared of him. Yeah, no, we're scared him of him. Come on, nah, he, he he's a puppy. He's not gonna do that. He's, a, he's all bark, no bite. We, we'll get the we'll season means, preview. By all means, okay. tell him how wonderful we are. We'd love to. I will. Yeah, he was in the I, I, he was in the Admiralty when you were there too. Yeah, yeah, he was there. That's my guy. Okay. That's me and him like brothers. But yeah. he's all bark, no bite. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm really would be considered be the no nonsense guy. Warren is really a big lovable dude. Just all bark, <laughs> no bite. Don't, don't even worry about him, man. I'm he not convinced. Going off on his tangent. Trust not me, convinced. Off on his tangent. Trust me. When I'm, I'm telling you, as brother to brother, family to family, we fucking his family. He all talk. He all bark. He just <laughs> annoying with that. Trust me. Play this clip. Show this clip to him. He'll be like, all right, Sam, all right, trust me. <laughs> get him on. He's going to be fine. He's great. You all going to be great. He's going to be able to give you all some great stories. There you go. We have, that's, the, cool. uh, that's the trailer then for this episode. We'll tag Warren in it. Send, send, Challenge yeah, extended. Tag, 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 tag my man Warren. He got to be next. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, once again, I'd just like to thank you again, Simeon, for joining us. Thank my co-hosts tonight, Kieran and Graham. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications. And don't forget to join us at bucksuk.org. Come and join us on the forum. There's plenty going on, lots of chat and discussions, particularly about the free agency. And we'll see you all for the next episode, which will be episode 33.